So in this video I'll be discussing the second case study in the A2 section um, and it is the domestic 13 amp power plug. Now as with the uh, toothbrush it's, it's useful to sort of uh, review these sort of case studies because they give you an understanding of why materials are being used and chosen uh, based on their material properties. Um, in the case of the plug um, the main function of this is to obviously provide a safe connection between the appliance that you're plugging in and the obviously the 240 volt um, alternating current supply in the in the home. Now, one of the key things with this is obviously these 13 amp plugs are designed to last for an incredibly long time. If you imagine they are going to be plugged in and out several several times with it throughout their their life, and uh, because of this they need to be particularly durable. In addition to this, um, this particular product is white in colour. Obviously this um, is a requirement, or it's, it's not a requirement, but it does um, link this product into a, a large um, uh, selection of other sort of white goods and obviously will kind of blend in with the home if you think your electrical uh, power sockets themselves are often made from uh, urea formaldehyde they're often white as well and you don't want something like a plug to be standing out just as a sort of an aesthetic consideration really um, there's a number of features that have also been designed to make this pro product sort of easier and also safer to use and indeed more ergonomic um, if you take a plug like this and actually look at the sides you'll see there's kind of like a section where your fingers kind of can slot in between. Now this serves a few purposes. Obviously it, it provides additional grip so that your fingers don't slip off the plug because um, it's quite a smooth surface obviously with the, um, the thermoplastic in that, uh, sorry the thermo setting plastic in that sense. In addition to this it also keeps your fingers away from the actual uh, potentially live sections of the plug which is the bits that, that open up the, uh, the inner part of the actual socket. So the brass sort of pins that are kind of getting forced into the socket you don't want to be touching those potentially if they are uh, live. Now internally inside the plug you open it up you obviously see um, three different cabling um, and there's various guides sort of moulded in that allow the cables to go to the right sections of the plug and these are obviously secured in place by um, uh, clamps and screws and the brass inserts there obviously join those um, electrical components together as well. Now the materials used on this product obviously have to carry out lots of different functions or a couple of different functions. Now the brass obviously has to allow electricity to flow through the cables therefore it should be quite sort of a, a good conductor of electricity but on the other hand the, uh, the, the urea formaldehyde casing, the, the white plastic casing that you can see, we obviously want to prevent the user from touching anything that's conductive or potentially getting electrical shock from this and therefore it needs to be very insulative okay additionally inside that you can see the cable in the, co the copper cable in obviously has to provide very high uh, conductivity but once again to protect the user from any sort of cables becoming potentially loose the cables are covered with a thermoplastic sheathing sometimes called TPS which is often made of PVC polyvinyl chloride now this obviously needs to be very flexible because the the, the, the uh, wires need to be uh, kind of um, bent around and secured uh, nicely inside the plug. In addition, they also need to be coloured so the user knows which is the live supply, which is the neutral and which is the earth. Um, so quite often you'll find a plug has a live supply now which is coded as brown, uh, you have a, a neutral supply which is often blue and a yellow and green earth supply. Okay, Previously the colours were slightly different but obviously this is a universal sort of labelling uh, across Europe I believe that will allow people to know, you know that the product's been wired in the correct uh, way. Okay, So we know that um, urea formaldehyde is a very good insulator electricity, in addition to this it's very rigid and it has a of strength so again the, the forces of you pushing it and pulling it from the plug in and out will not uh, wear or break the product over time and obviously this product being a thermo um, setting plastic is made via compression molding okay so this allows the sort of uh, cross links to form between the long chain molecules and would give con by compression molding gives the necessary time and the pressure for these uh, to form okay now the other question I suppose is why have they chosen brass for the, the actual pins in the circuit, okay, because obviously aluminium is a better of a, uh, conductor electricity, okay, um, so you could use that, however the problem is with aluminium is it's quite a soft material and it's quite lightweight, so it means as you push the plug in and out eventually it might wear over time, meaning the, place, the, the plug could become loose and there's a potential of arcs and poor connection with inside the uh, circuit there. In addition, you could use potentially copper as it has a very 
high melting point and it makes it uh, capable of handling high currents and it's, it's quite a strong material, stronger than aluminium but again it doesn't have that wear resistance so as we push it in and out of the plug eventually the inside of the socket would wear it down and again it might come loose. So brass being an alloy of both copper and zinc, uh, the zinc is allowing the copper to be strengthened and hardened and it gives it more wear, wear resistant to durability making it a little bit better. So although it's not as electrically um, uh, conductive as copper, the brass, you know, provides a good sort of base of various different properties that you require.